In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about sharing your GarageBand projects on the iPhone or the iPad. Let's go. Here we are in GarageBand on my iPhone and it's very similar on the iPad. Now there's a lot I want to show in this video, but if you're looking for something specific, head to the description. We've got some timestamps down there that are going to help you out. So I've recorded and I've mixed my track here. I've added my effects and if we hit play, we're ready to go. So I now want to share or export this song. So what do I do? Well, we tap in the top left corner here and we go to my songs. And here we can now actually share this either as a file, an M4A or WAV file, or the project or even a ringtone. Let's show you how to do that now. There's two ways to select and share our file. We can tap select in the top right corner, tap on our file, and then hit the share button here in the bottom left and go to this sheet here. Or the other thing we can do is tap and hold on our project file. Then at the very bottom, we can tap on share and we'll get back to this same share sheet. The three ways we can share our project are as a song file. That's a stereo wave or M4A file of the final mix. We also have a ringtone if you want to use it as a ringtone on your iPhone or your iPad. And you can also share the project file, which I don't actually use. And I'll tell you why as we go through this video. We want to share the song, so we're going to tap on song. And now we can choose the quality, everything from a low quality 64 kilobit M4A file up to a 44.1 kilohertz, 20 24-bit WAV file. Now, if you're using this to release it, if you're going to actually release this song, or you want to share a high-quality version or edit it with a video, I highly recommend an uncompressed WAV file. That's your best quality. And I would stay away from the lower quality M4A. This time, just for convenience, let's go down the middle. We're going to choose the highest quality compressed file, and then we're going to hit share. And here we're presented with our share sheet. Now, this is where it gets tricky because there's a bug at the moment in iOS 13 and iPadOS, at least as of December 2019. Whereas if you have a save to files option here, it won't actually save it to files. And sometimes it doesn't even have it at all. So the first thing you need to do is actually tap on the open in button instead. And this will actually export the song and allow you to share it or open it in another application. So let's wait for this to export and then I'll show you the next step. So that's nearly done exporting and boom. Now we're into the share sheet where we can actually do some useful things. So you can see down the bottom here, we can save to Dropbox, save to files, add tags, unzip and zip. They're just the actions I have defined. Across the top here, you can see that we can send the file to some predetermined apps and we can even tap the more button here and send it to other apps. So we could send it over to iMovie, for instance, and add it to an iMovie project. I've got another video showing you how to do GarageBand to iMovie sharing, which I'll link up the top and in the description. But for now, the most common thing and what I recommend is to actually save to files. So we're going to tap on the save to files button. And here we go. It's telling me that we've got our file here. We're ready to save it. So we can choose to save it on my iPhone. So I can put it in my iPhone location. I can pop it back here in GarageBand or I can put it on any of my iCloud Drive folders. So let's just choose my Studio Live Today folder here in the file structure. I think I've even got one here uh, for music, uh, backgrounds and stings. That'll do for now. We'll save it in there. We'll hit the save button and there you go. That is now done. It has actually exported this. It has made it. It's mixed it down to an M for a file and then it saved it in our files app. Let's jump over to files and show you where it is. So let's now switch apps. We'll navigate over to our files app and now we can actually go find this file. So we're here in iCloud Drive and we know that it was in my Studio Live Today folder here. We can go down here, music, background and stings and come down and there it is. So we can tap on it and it will open up the file. If we want to play it, we'll just come over to a section with music, hit play. It's a common and we're good to go. And from here, we can now share this. Now that we've saved the file out in the top right in our files app, we can tap on the share again, and then we can share it out using that same method. So this is why my recommendation is to save it once, either on your iPhone or on your iPad or on an iCloud Drive location, and then share it to your apps from here. It just means that you've always got an actual file, an actual backup file of that mix that you can then use in the future, rather than sending it directly to another app. So we'll hit done on that one, and there you go. That is all done. We have exported our file.
Now, if we wanted to do a ringtone, we follow the exact same process, but this time we tap on ringtone and it says your length needs to be adjusted. So yes, your ringtone can only be 30 seconds. It will be automatically shortened. So if you do have a longer song like this one, it is going to chop it down. We hit continue, we name the ringtone, we hit export, and it's going to export that as a ringtone that we can then use in our iPhone. And there you go, that's done. You can even now use the sound as and actually make it your standard ringtone, text tone, or assign it to a contact immediately. So that's super handy, super convenient if you want your own custom ringtones. And our third option here is to share the project file. So let's tap on project file there, and this will bring it up. It's gonna share it as a garage band project file. Again, we can tap open in like we did with the song file, but this time it doesn't need to export anything. We can just save it to files. Now, the reason I said before that I don't use this is that this is actually no different from actually just copying the file. So this was useful before we had the files app and before we could copy files. If we tap save to files, we can save it wherever we want, but you know what? we can also do, we can also tap select and tap on this one here and actually use the copy function here. So if we tap on that one, we can just do that and then browse to the location where we want to save it. So if we wanted to save it in that same location there, we just hit copy there and it's actually copied that one across. So there's really no need to actually do that. In fact, I'll show you where that goes. If we go back to files now, we can navigate in here and there it is. So it's actually copied the band, the dot band project file as well as the original M4A file. And we've now got a backup copy of both the mix down and the original project here ready to go. Now, if we wanted to share this .band project file with other users, if you're using iCloud Drive, we can do that really easily. I'll show you that in one moment. But the trap that people fall into is trying to share this .band project outside of the Apple world. If you're sending it to Google Drive or Dropbox or anywhere else, it is simply not going to work. What you need to do first is compress the file. Thankfully, here in iOS 13, that's super simple. All we need to do is, again, tap Select, tap on this one here, and then in the bottom right corner here, I just have to move my nodule, Bottom right corner, we tap this one and we tap on the compress button. This is the built-in zip compression that we have right here in iOS 13 and iPad OS 13. So what it's going to do is going to zip up that .band project into a .zip file and then we can actually transfer that .zip file to any other platform. We can save it on Google Drive, we can save it on Dropbox and it will work perfectly. Then all the other person needs to do if you send it to them or if you add it to Dropbox is download it, bring it into their files and uncompress. In fact, I'll show you that in just a moment once this is finished zipping. And here we go, next to my .band project file, next to my exported file, we now have a zip file. And what we can do is tap select in the top right corner, tap on our zip file, hit the ellipsis, these three dots in the bottom right, and now uncompress. And yep, you guessed it, it is going to unzip that file and actually bring it back as another .band project file right here on my iPhone. There it is unzipping, there it is done. Things change, version 11, number two. So that's as easy as that. Just make sure that when you are sharing outside of the iOS, outside of the Apple world, that you zip up your files before you share them. If you share the .band project file, you'll end up with a corrupt file that will not be able to be opened by you or anyone. So zip it up and then share it, you'll be good to go. The other way to share our project is to actually share it so other people can collaborate on it as well. So we're gonna use the same process here. We're gonna tap on project, and then instead of using open in or any of our apps, we can actually add people by pressing on the add people button here. Now, it is a little flaky. In fact, I just tried it and it crashed, which isn't a good indication of the success rate you get. So I don't use it a lot, but I do have another video where I show how I do it, which I'll link up the top and in the description. You do need to be very careful managing versions because every time one of you opens it and adds to it, it will update on all users garage band. So it is kind of cool, but personally, I prefer to zip and then share and then you've got more control, but it's another option for sharing your garage band projects. So a couple of tips for successful sharing. I said it before, but I'm going to reiterate it here. If you are sharing and you're sharing as a song, like I'm doing here, make sure that if you're sharing and you have the save to files option, you don't select it. Always select open in first. I'll show you what happens if we go and save it as a file immediately. It looks like it's all going to work. It looks like it's exported the song, but what it actually does is it saves it as this weird version of a file that doesn't work. If we tap save on that one, and then we'll go 
over to our files location here. We'll go to iCloud Drive and we'll find this again. So iCloud Drive into our Studio Live Today folder down the bottom here and then down into music. And let's go and find that demo song. There it is. If we've hit play on that one, yeah. It just shows us this. It's got no play button. It reckons it's MPEG-4 audio, but it's not playable. So that's what happens. If you ever have that error, it looks like it's a file. It acts like it's a file, but it's not the real file. Well, then that's because you've saved to files instead of using open in. So remember to open in and then save to files. You'll be good to go. And speaking of files, you'll have probably noticed that files looks an awful lot like your GarageBand layout. So the other error I see folks make that they ask me about is they'll come in here to the files option and they'll be trying to share a project from in here. So if we grab a project here, we tap select, we select on it, we hit share, well, we're going to get this whole different set of options here. It's not actually going to give us our share as song, share as project because we're not in GarageBand. It looks like we are, but we're not, remember if we're over here in GarageBand and then we share from here, we get that different set of options and that's what you want. You want to make sure you're in the GarageBand app and not the Files app and you'll be able to share successfully every time. There's two more videos all about sharing down the bottom. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking or tapping on the Studio Live Today icon in the top right corner and I'll see you next time.